When we hear about celebrities claiming to be addicted to sex, there's often a collective eye roll. But when it comes to porn, there's increasingly concrete evidence, science, that the addiction can be real and as powerful as drugs and alcohol. For many kids who can easily access porn from their computers and even smartphones, it can go well beyond just a dirty habit and become a dangerous one. Here's ABC's Lindsay Davis. According to one study, seven out of 10 teens have accidentally stumbled across porn online. But experts are asking, is the average teen really ready for this? A hardcore porn video, just right on my phone for anybody to access. We've always suspected that porn can't be good for the teenage brain, but tonight, a new study. Is there now scientific evidence to back that up? When he puts porn into Google, what does he think he's going to come up with? Probably pictures of breasts, maybe a naked woman. In reality, he has catapulted into a world of sexual violence. Gail Dines, the author of a book called Pornland, says for the average teenage boy, porn is his first formative impression of sex. He's not got a reservoir of his own experience of sexuality with other people. He's probably never had sex with another human being. And it's not just boys. Winifred Bonjean Allpart was only 12 years old when she shockingly admitted she'd not only seen porn, she says she understood all the innuendo. We're getting messages from everywhere that are saying if you dress this way, you are going to be either treated well or you're going to feel powerful. Sex is power. Winifred is part of this new order of teens brought up in an era where explicit images can be found just about anywhere. We're like the first generation to have what we have. So there's no one before us that can kind of guide us. I mean, we are the pioneers. And these images can be traumatic. Her friend Danielle first learned about sex on a porn site. It was this one black guy, one Hispanic guy, and this one very blonde woman. And they were just like ferociously banging each other. It was very, mm. I mean, I came home, I was bawling my eyes out. I'll never forget it. It's not surprising that these images often color teens' ideas of what sex should be like. It's not as good as masturbating. Caleb is a young man living in England with a long-time porn compulsion. He spoke with English journalist Martin Dobney, saying that he's had sex with women and it just doesn't compare. It's not as good because they're not as good as the porn. Obviously, the porn girls have done it a lot more and a lot more confident. And with pornography so ever-present, some teens become addicted to it, sometimes at heartbreakingly young ages. So 12 to 13, all the way up to probably 14, it was kind of there, uninterrupted. I became almost numb to it. It became such a part of my pretty much daily routine. Nathan, a teen in Utah, eventually admitted what was going on to his parents and was ultimately able to quit. But for others, it's not that easy. I started to isolate myself because I hated what I was doing. I hated that I couldn't stop. Brienne is now 23, but remembers just how strong her addiction was during all of her high school years. I would say that this is something that um, was not just me. I, I knew tons of students who were in my grade, my peers, who were struggling with the same thing. For Caleb, he says it crept up on him. At first, obviously, I didn't know the limits and the bounds of what is extreme until I'd speak to my friends and I'd find out how much they view of porn and it just didn't compare. Like, every bit of spare time I have in the day is watching porn. Dobney spent a day with him to see the problem firsthand. Why do you think you've got this relationship with porn? I don't know. I really don't know. I just think that's just something that my brain must have picked up. I can't find a way to stop. I've tried getting rid of my smartphone there and think to yourself, why have I just done what I've done? And how do you get over that low? Do it again. Dobney gets a glimpse of Calum's hard-fought struggle when they drive past a pretty girl, and it immediately cool, triggers cool. a reaction. Where are you off to? Just going to go to the toilet, couldn't I? There he goes. Really? Better? Yeah. So, to be honest, Crack one out? Yeah. So annoying afterwards. How do you feel now? Pissed off. Why? 
because it's just like for that split second, it, I just feel like it's the best thing to do. And then as soon as I finished, it's like, why the f did I just do that? Well, that sounds like a drug addiction to yeah, me. Yeah, it is virtually because I can't, I can't stop it. But is Caleb's internet porn compulsion the same thing as a true clinical addiction? Does it actually change a person's brain? Dr. Valerie Voon, a neuropsychiatrist and global authority on addiction working at Cambridge University, decided to find out. I wasn't sure what to expect when I first started this study, to be perfectly frank. And in part because we just know so little about it. In these images, you can actually see the pleasure centers of an addict's brain responding to their drug of choice. Would scans of young people with a porn compulsion show the same results? Voon found 20 young men between 19 and 34 whose lives were so controlled by porn that they were willing to be a part of the study. They didn't want to be identified, but they were willing to be scanned and compared to a control group of volunteers. The subjects were shown images of explicit porn to see if their reward centers would respond in the same way as drug users. When the data was analyzed, the results were astounding. We see there's a very clear increase in activity in the reward center. The compulsive users' reactions were twice as active as those in the control group in the pleasure center known as the striatum, matching the responses of drug and alcohol addicts. Compulsive pornography users do have parallels with substance use disorders. Of course, one study is not definitive, and the Free Speech Coalition, a trade group for the porn industry, says that unlike drugs and alcohol, adult content is not and cannot be a chemical addiction, no more than compulsive shopping, gaming, or hoarding. But even if we assume this is an addiction, what's the cure? Cindy Gallup, a former ad exec turned entrepreneur, thinks she has a solution. Replace hardcore online porn with images of real lovemaking. She started a website called Make Love Not Porn, a kind of YouTube video streaming channel online where real life couples give us a peek beneath their sheets. The site went public in January and already has more than 100,000 users. Children are viewing hardcore porn years and years and years before they will ever have their own first sexual experiences and it's shaping their view of what sex is. That is why what we're doing is so important. Why don't you guys, like, kiss? Other producers, like director Jinsey Lumpkin, are making what they say are softer, more relatable depictions of sex. Porn is a fantasy, and it can't ever stand in as sex education. But for the kids who view these hardcore images, they can be difficult to erase from the brain. For Winifred, these pictures that many kids see too many of too soon simply don't translate to true life or true love. Parents are able to talk to their children about what real love and real sex later on is. Most of the kids I know would trust our parents over two porn stars that we've never met. For Nightline, I'm Lindsay Davis in New York.